teacher round table show it's live it's the dj round table show tell another dj it is tuesday night it is eight o'clock you know where your dj's at i know where i'm at i'm here with you yes it is another dj round table hopefully you're enjoying ourselves right now and that you're enjoying everything that we do and that uh, you're having fun and a beautiful weeknight here join us here on beautiful twitch and if you're watching this over on YouTube's, I need your help. I need you to help me smash the algorithm on YouTube. It's a hard, hard beast to slay. So do me a few favors. Uh, first thing first, hit the like button. It helps a lot, the channel. The other thing, if you're not subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. The third thing, check your bell icon. And one extra, please share the video. It helps get it out there more. More people can see it. More people can know what's going on. And they can watch and enjoy the show. And also, I want to hear from you guys. Critique, criticism, comments, anything, tomfoolery. Say it down below. As always, being live here on Twitch, uh, we take real live questions. And we try and answer them on screen as quickly as possible so as soon as I move over my little Twitch uh, window. And as always, we have a lot of great DJs. Today we have a guest DJ who is on here from the great state of California and is a neighbor of a man out there in the SoCal area, in the SoCal market. Uh, many, many years of experience. And also, if you guys are on YouTube, you guys probably recognize him a little bit from YouTube. He's been on plenty of shows on YouTube, had some great stuff on there, and he is uh, here tonight uh, hanging out with us, having some fun, and enjoying the show. And hopefully you're enjoying the show as well. And uh, you get to have some uh, party time with us. That's right. It is the DJ Roundtable Show. And I appreciate you all for watching the show. I know that uh, it is uh, mid-year, mid-season. We can look back at the uh, first half of the year. And now we're going into the second half of the year. And a lot of things are going on. Some of us are busy. Some of us are not as busy as others. Uh, some of us get the DJ into... Um, oh, we just lost one person, but we'll get them back in a second. Uh, we, we have some people get a DJ in fireworks stores, some people get a DJ in uh, restaurants, some people get a DJ at bars, some people get a DJ at an event, at a wedding, a party, a quinceanera, or etc. The one thing is that this is kind of a review for you guys looking back at your first six months, seven months of the year because it's end of July going in August. How do you rate your first half of the year? Have you been busy? Have you not been busy? What do you feel? How do you feel about the second half of the year? Are you going to get really busy coming up soon? And the reason why I ask that is because this is a time as a business owner, you always reflect and look at what we're doing for marketing, how we're doing things. And also, you know, again, are we prepared for someone calls at the last minute and says, hey, Hunter, uh, I have a party. I want you to come DJ. Can you come DJ the party? So I'm going to start with Hunter first. Uh, I know he is the best DJ on the beach down there in beautiful South Carolina, uh, bringing the South up, and also uh, is right by the ocean, not far. So he's probably, hopefully, his cake by the ocean once in a while. That is a <laughs> uh, joke right there, as intended. Uh, Hunter, the first half of the year, I know you did the fireworks store. I know you're not as busy as some of the others, but how are you feeling about the first half? Are you very optimistic about the second half? Well, yeah. Um... My first half of the year was awesome. I did a Night to Shine prom for the special needs adult at a, at a church here in Conway. That was back in February. And then I took about a month or two break until April when I did two uh, dances. I did a middle school dance for a Christian school. I did a fifth grade glow night um, at a, an elementary school in Carolina Forest, Carolina Forest Elementary. And I took a really long break until July when I DJed the fireworks store. And I don't have another DJ gig until September. So it's been kind of slow in terms of the number of gigs I've been getting. And then for, with the off time you're doing, and I know I see, and again, if you have not done so already, links down below in YouTube. And if you want to, you can go to any of the episodes up on YouTube and see the link for Hunter. He does have a YouTube channel. I've been seeing a lot of video from you, how to do things, especially on like sound switch that you got a sound switch unit or on yeah. your, uh, on your, uh, uh, Denon equipment and so forth, so on. 
it's very interesting because it just gives you time to practice and get better at things. Yeah. Have you found that you enjoying this that you get to make some good YouTube content plus oh, yeah. practice? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I'm home hoping that 2025 is better than 2024 in terms of the uh, terms of gigs. And that that's the thing. Oh, uh, Kevin's in the chat. Kevin, how you doing? All of you from Ohio. Um, not far from Mr. Dixon. Uh, Kevin says, Glow, what lights did you use? So I guess, uh, Hunter, you said that you had oh, a glow yeah. party. Oh, well, I mostly used my Shave Watchfax 2s. Uh, we had UV lights that people provided to put around the room. I didn't have any. I just put, I just used my Chavez. Okay. So use the Chavez to uh, light the yeah, room, well, and then people brought people UV lights to uh, yeah. <coughs> delay up the room. Okay. Yeah, the UV lights were mostly provided by other people. Okay. I just bought the Chavez. Uh, Brentley's coming back in. Hopefully, you know, a little uh, hiccup probably interwebs there in Wisconsin. Maybe a little too much cheese, you know, <laughs> or a little too much beer. We'll find out in a second here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bradley, a little too much beer or a little too much cheese in the internet up there? Looks like it's running really slow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll give him a second or two. Let him get uh, filtered in there. I'm not sure. My internet's being off screen. Let me change uh, networks again. Hang on. No problem. So I'm going to go to Dwayne. Dwayne, I know that you have your regular full-time gig, which that is winding down. And this coming month, August is going to be your last month as officially as a full-time teacher for uh, the school system you're in, but you will be going into more in your business and doing some other stuff. How has the first half of the year been for you? Has it been great? Has it been slow? Has it been average? And your second half, are you looking forward to it or is there anything special you're looking for in the second half? Um, I would say the first half was consistent. Cause I'm starting to get out and people starting to know that I DJ. So I'm getting a lot of return, um, clients. So, um, I would say the second half is, would also be consistent once things get going. Cause next, um, and I have one, I got a back to school in a couple of weeks. Um, at the end of the month, I got a, um, class reunion and then I have a few school engagements and then i have a couple of church stuff so and then birthday parties sprinkled in between and all that so i would say my my business has been pretty consistent and what would be your second half what about the later half august september october november any holiday parties you know you have already or anything like that uh, yeah i got the uh, december one i already got booked for our um prom um, I got a birthday party coming up. Um, I'm not possible wedding. So the usual is, but it's just more consistent and more private parties. So one of the things, and I'm going to, I'm going to stop the panel right now and ask this one real quickly, because Tracy and I were actually talking about this, uh, the other day, uh, we're seeing a big uptick of last minute bookings, you know, more or less, usually people book. Because, again, we do weddings. That's all we do. We don't do birthday parties and stuff like that. Um, we do uh, weddings. And weddings generally usually, at minimum six months, but most of the people usually a year. We actually have a couple 2026 weddings already booked. So it's one of the things that people, you know, booking out, you know, a year and a half, two years out almost uh, because they want to have a certain date. They want to have the right vendors and so forth. But I've also gotten people or last minute um, actually just got a not request uh, Monday, yesterday, uh, for uh, a date in August next month for a wedding. Uh, unfortunately, we're already booked, but I'm like, you know, she, they didn't go too much into detail what was going on. The DJ backed out or something happened. Uh, but it seems like a lot of last minute uh, events. And I wanted to see a show of hands. Uh, are other people seeing also last minute people getting phone calls and frantically, frankly calling you? Okay, I see Joe, Jeff, what about you? Matt, yeah. a little bit, Jeff, and then Dwayne? No. Nah. No? Not frantically. They just think it's normal to like look for their wedding DJ a month out. 
that that's They're scary not frantic at all yeah you, you you need a lot of time you need some time for prepping and stuff like that and, you know music selection and so forth and so on but uh going back to you Dwayne, um mm -hmm. on the uh your last day of of working for the school district and that again i know it's coming up soon um are you going to throw a party and if so uh are you going to dj your own party or are you just going to have music on and chill with your friends and family that we haven't decided yet we we we've been talking about it but i really never actively sat down and thought about exactly how it was going to go so yeah we're we're going to do a party it's just a matter of what day so we're just waiting for everything to kind of like slow down first. Cause I'm still like, I want it right in the summer, like busy working. So. It'll yeah. Come. And that's the thing you, it, Tracy and I had, um, in 2022, uh, because of, uh, you know, 2020 and 2021, we leave to 2022, uh, to have a graduation party for Tracy finishing college. Cause she went back and, and got her, uh, degrees and, um, also birthdays and we celebrate and it's just a celebration with friends and family. We had the golf course here and I had, I made a mix um, right here on my computer. Cause I have, you know, virtual DJ recorded the mix and I, we did our setup there. We had the TV up there. A um, couple of my, my, uh, we did all black, black setup, J couple J eights, uh, our basic lighting uh, just to give a nice feel to things and had that play i uh, had uh i did i did uh three uh one hour mixes so it was three hours we had four hours total the first hour i was up there doing stuff until people started really coming in and then i w switched over to a recorded uh uh videos and had the music videos run in stuff like that and went over and started enjoying stuff and talking to people and stuff but it, it's one of the things i definitely would say um make sure you enjoy it uh, i already talked to i was trying to talk to tracy because this August 22nd, it's our 25th wedding anniversary. And we want to do another little uh, get together. Uh, maybe, you know, uh, depending on scheduling, uh, maybe he you know, a friends and dinner. But I'm like, I still want to, like, being a DJ, still want to bring some music. At least one of my Molly Fives and have something pre-recorded on a computer and I can just plug in and play. But it, it's one of the things that uh, make sure you enjoy yourself. That's one of the things Tracy's worried about because she knows that I'm very passionate about it. And, you know, she's like, well, you got to talk to your friends. So I'm like, yes, I know. But we had uh, for our party, we had like 60 people. I was 70 people. And it was, you know, nice, small little party. And we enjoyed ourselves. So uh, my uh, thing to you is make sure you have fun and um, make sure that you, know, you get a chance to enjoy it. Don't 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 go crazy and you know, DJ the whole night because people want to talk to you. Uh, I saw Brentley. I saw your messages, seeing it up there. You switch networks. I, I just think it's too much beer and cheese in Wisconsin, or maybe uh, one of the uh, many people on code blue cam that uh, may be playing with the internets over there. Uh, <laughs> down here, uh, an unfortunate thing happened. Uh, speaking of internet or just utilities, a vehicle ran into a light pole and a church a couple blocks away got fired from it in Downers Grove. So uh, crazy things happen. So hopefully uh, nothing crazy like that's happening in uh, the great state of Wisconsin and in La Crosse area. Uh, hopefully you're safe and everyone else is safe there. Uh, I'm going to go over to Matt because Matt was chiming in for a little bit about last minute uh, bookings and stuff like that. I wanted mm -hmm. to see how you're doing with your bookings uh, the first half and the second half uh, here – uh, we see a big, huge upswing basically the end of August, May, I mean, end of August, September, October, and November has become like the new May, June, July. It has been crazy busy. June wasn't bad. July wasn't bad. August, we have, you know, a few gigs, but it seems like September, October, November here has been very crazy. I don't know if it's crazy by you or not, but what, what do you see in the second half of the year? And what, how was your first half? Um, yeah, I was, I mean, first half was good. January was slower than normal. February was also slower than normal. Um, we had, we had a bunch of corporate stuff in December, but, uh, a couple of the companies we normally do in January either didn't have them in January or skipped this year or moved it around, uh, or went with a venue that had somebody. So, 
started off a little slow, but March, April, May, June, July, March, April, May, June was pretty insane. Um, July was nice, took some vacation time. It wasn't as busy. I also purposely took a couple weekends where like if somebody reached out, I just quoted them then insanely high so that it would stay open. So, um, but yeah, August is insane. Um, and there's DJ Expo and I'm going to Colorado for a wedding uh, to DJ. So it's a busy month ahead. Next couple of weeks, um, September, actually, September is big, busy, but I also keep some dates open for homecoming. So there's a couple free Saturdays and Fridays right now that'll for sure get filled. Uh, I also had one cancellation, but yeah, it's it's busier this year than last year, uh, for sure. So uh, happy for that. Uh, but I, I, I've been getting the leads, online leads have been slower this month, but the amount of phone calls I've been getting has been tremendously high. Like everybody's calling, oh, I'm looking for DJ for baby shower this weekend, or, oh, I'm looking for next month. Like, you know, it's all Saturdays that I'm busy on anyway. So, uh, and all of them are looking for like a five, six, seven hundred dollar DJ, nothing crazy. So it's not useful calls, but you know, business is business. So it's, it's good. I just hope, uh, you know, we're hope we can hit the same numbers we're hitting this year as next year before I go and buy a van. Well, yeah, and we were, we were talking a little bit beforehand because uh, both Brentley and I have vans. I have a Sprinter, uh, and Brentley has a um, E three fifty or two fifty. Three fifty. Three fifty. So yeah. we both have vans. He, uh, Brentley has a ex little extended roof on his vehicle. I have the taller, longer Sprinter. I uh, actually the extended, so it's actually like two feet longer. Um, and you know, I, this is my third Sprinter uh, vehicle, and Matt is looking at another comparable uh, van to a Sprinter um, vehicle. And one of the things I wish, and I keep looking, I keep eyeing it, and I want to pull the trigger. It's actually two things. One thing I definitely know I'm going to do: I'm going to upgrade my headlights to LED headlights because the headlights on Mercedes Sprinters stink. Uh, there's a company actually based in California, Colorado, in Colorado. They have an LED direct replacement, whole entire light, and it's like two grand to get it done. So I'm going to do that uh, to my van. Uh, the other thing I really look at, keep eyeing at, is from one of the upfitters is a ramp. And I know you have some heavy stuff with uh, woofers and stuff. Brentley has his uh, uh, cart. And he has his booth with wheels. And Brentley, you, you have a you have a ramp on yours? Yeah, I got a I got a Rudman ramp, I think it was from Amazon for like 190 bucks. Yeah, it's uh, I think that's a brand I have too. It's uh it's just uh like a fold out fold yeah. fold out and fold over. Yeah, I'm not a super big fan of it. In fact, I almost and and this is my own fault because I was so tired over the weekend, but I almost my toe almost slipped because I wasn't paying attention. But I'm I'm thinking about looking into one of those ones that go in the back of the van and fold out and have a panel to drop. I mean, six of one, half dozen of the other, because if I screw up on either, you know, if I'm not paying attention, it'll roll off the side of the ramp anyway. But I'm really considering that moving into the uh moving forward, not only for my toad, but the port the lights I got that I used over the weekend, that case is as big as my toad, just for those two blinders. So yeah, oh, yeah, I'm really considering the road case, like the fold-out ramps now for all that. I use a I use one called Guard Home. Uh, I put it in the chat. What's nice about it is it's uh, separate from like the other ramps. This one is just so slightly wider to where it'll actually fit for a flight case of a dual twenty-one. Uh, all the other ones are usually capped at around twenty-six <laughs> to twenty-eight inches. This one's almost thirty. Uh, that, one that's one of the things that I'm looking at the upfitter. One of the companies here, uh, U.S. Upfitters, um, not far from me in uh, Addison. It's like they have a couple different ones. One I looked at is probably installed over five grand, but it's you can swing it out, you can swing it in, you can lock it inwards, you can lock it outwards, and it's like a hundred and hundred and ten inches. There's a audio guy, which I, I wanted to get on here. He's down in Texas. He has a shorter sprinter, but has the same height. And he has that same um, uh, that same ramp, but he has a shorter one. And he said, I wish I would have got the longer one because it's not as steep of an incline. 
Mm -hmm. So it's one of those cases that the longer ones cost a few bucks more, but would save your back. And I definitely would say if you're looking at one of the vans, I know we we're talking about throwing some numbers around. Talk to them about a local upfitter you have out there. Do they deal with? Because they deal with the stuff all the time. I would definitely say get at least one shelf because I have one shelf unit in my van to hold little things. I have uh, e track on both sides. Um, I would say do a couple layers of that, one low, kind of one medium, and that way you can hang things and ratchet strap stuff down. Uh, the other thing also I would say um, for you or anyone else getting a van is also if you're going to do a ramp, do all that at the same time, and they roll that into your price. So they'll get the upfitter, we'll do all the work. That way when they deliver the truck to you, all that stuff is done. It's out of the way. It's not that you get in a truck, like, oh, yeah, I need this, this. I definitely would say, you know, uh, look at what you want to do. And my dog came in, said hi, and now she's walking out. <laughs> um, look what you want to do. But I, I, I have that in my van. I have a shelf, and I have E-Track on both sides. I only have one layer E-Track, and I wish I would have done two, but I have it uh, kind of the height of the top of the speakers, so I can ratchet the speakers to the side. And on the other side, I have like my table, my uh, high boy, a couple chairs, and then I have some totems. So I have stuff on one side and I have stuff on the other side. But the e-track, I love it. And there's a company, uh, e-trailer.com, that has retractable straps. So you can unhook it from the track. It will zip, mm -hmm. zip back into itself. You pull it out, you lock it into the track, and then you wrench it down and tighten it up. And I'll tell you, I have I have a bunch of those. Best thing ever, easiest thing to deal with because you don't worry about straps hanging down. Uh, I have a couple of the standard straps. Tracy has a problem with them because you got to you got to kind of ranch it and open it up to move it. This right here is just like a seatbelt. You pull it out, wrap it around whatever you're doing, connect it, and you just ratchet it down. A couple of ratchets, and you're locked in. You're good. No, I know. <laughs> I have I have uh, I have self ratcheting tie downs. They're amazing. Best thing yeah. ever made. Yep, they're they're awesome. And uh etrailer.com is the one where I got mine from. I'm going to when you guys are watching on YouTube, I will make sure there's a link for the Amazon link as well as the link for e-trailer for those uh ratchet straps for you so it makes it easy and simple for you. Um and then uh you know, as far as ramp, again, if you go to Upfitter, if you have a vehicle, you can upfit, take a look at it, see which one fits for your vehicle, talk to them. Uh they're not cheap, but you know, again, good is not cheap. And, you know, yeah, that's one thing I look at. If you're getting a vehicle like that, uh, a van, sometimes, you know, putting a few bucks out is always a good thing. Now I want to go to the next California guy uh, who's not far from Matt. He's a little further west than Matt, uh, but, you know, similar area. How is business for you, Joe? Has it been good for you the first half and second half? And you, we, I, I asked before, I saw your hand go up for the last minute bookings. What's going on with you with that stuff? So here in California, it's a little bit different because we have a lot of DJs, uh, overwhelming DJs. So basically, uh, the work has to come from, well, my work comes from events, weddings, quinces, and I do a lot of bar and nightclub work during the week. Uh, also, corporate events. So I want to say... It was probably not as busy as last year because this year is kind of money's tight and people are kind of hanging on to that money. That's why they're kind of pulling back from booking an event, especially if it's going to cost them, you know, 30 to 40 to 50 grand to book uh, an event for their wedding. They're going to kind of like, well, wait a minute, let me, let me see, let me see. Um, uh, let's do it next, next year because the prices will basically go down. Everything is going up. So that's, that's kind of, I want to say that's probably the prime reason why people are kind of waiting to the last minute because they're trying to figure out where am I going to get this money and should I have it now or later? It just depends. But to answer your question, uh, it was pretty much maybe about four or five bookings per week. No, take that back, four. About four per week, but that's combined with DJ as well as club work. The same thing goes for the rest of the year. I have some uh, corporate events as well as weddings and pizzas and sweet 16s and a couple high school dances. And again, I, the thing that kind of keeps me busy is the bar nightclub scene. 
So if one's not working, the other one, other one does. I do network with a lot of DJs. I've always believed that by helping each other, you're going to stay busy. If you pull back and you think that you can do it all yourself, you're probably going to be the lonely guy, you know, out there and not, not get as many events. Or somebody gets sick, hurt, whatever, whatever the case, you're going to fill that gap one way or another. Um, I've always believed in perceived value when your setups, how it looks, because you got to look at it from this, this their standpoint. If you're doing an event and you've got 250 guests, you have at least maybe three or four possible bookings from there. Do you have a card, business card? I'm interested in hiring you. I get a lot of bookings that way because it's important for you to basically have your presence, the way you look, mic skills, the music, programming, everything falls in. And that just comes through experience. Um, so that's where I'm at. And you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're you're doing some good business and not as much as you hope for, because again, you're seeing people a little bit tighter finance. And again, I know in California, gas is a little bit more out there. There's a few more things higher in California, kind of like New York or kind of like here in Chicago versus some other areas. It's gas is cheaper in some are in other areas and so forth. So that, that's 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 one of the things you gotta kind of look at. Every market's different. So what's happening in your market out there may be totally different. What's happening in California, happening here in Illinois or another state. You may have gas at two dollars a gallon, you may have gas at twenty dollars a gallon. Whatever it is, it is, and that's part of the thing that, that that market forces on your business. And I'm glad to hear Joe is busy. Now, your second half coming up, uh, are you still seeing a good amount of business? Are you still doing really good for that? And also the other part is with that coming on, you know, with, with the second half going on and everything, are you still looking to book more clients? You still have more bandwidth to book people. So good question. I do, I do work for a company called Temple DJs Entertainment. Ugh, no. Yeah. God, I hate them. That's okay. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. Ryan, I don't. Ryan, is, uh, Ryan is one of my best friends. No, I don't hate them. I just can't. I can't stand all the gigs they take from us because people not not take. I don't know the right word. Their their pricing's too low. Let's say that. Okay, let's 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 look at it from another perspective. <laughs> you can only be in one place at one time. It's how you price yourself and how how the perceived value of your clients. Yes, he does. But I mean, I got to hand it to him. He has over a thousand yelp reviews i know they dominate he has, that he has to do i want to say about four or five hundred uh wedding wire and all this stuff the guy is very very good in marketing and he puts a lot of money and effort into it yes he does have his bottom feeder djs you know you want to work fine you don't want to work that's good mm -hmm. you know it just comes down to that whether whether or not you want to work um but i you know the thing is i do events for him and I have to be very picky because, again, like you said, you know, five, four, five hundred, six hundred dollars may not be in your cost of doing business. Because you look at it in the cost of doing business, how much does it cost for you to roll your equipment, your time to do an event? If you don't know that, you need to do that homework and say, okay, it cost me a thousand dollars to roll out to break even. Well, how many times are you doing that? Three or four, five, six, seven? The more events you do, maybe you can go ahead and lower your price a bit. But again, how much do you want to work for that amount of money? Yeah, or I've never I've never met Ryan in person. Uh, I know he follows me on Instagram or whatever. It's just there. I'll tell I'll tell the rest of the group how it is here in Orange County. There's like Tempo, there's Vox, and there's Second Song, and there's like a there's four companies that probably have oh uh, what's the other one um uh i don't know but there's like four companies here that all have like 20 djs and yeah. they all charge like 1500 or like around that area and they pay them like 100 to 200 bucks an hour and just pocket like a good amount and it's just pure volume but they have six seven hundred plus yelp reviews that like oh my god these guys are incredible and then you have second song and vox that are working at these bougie venues 
but it's for couples that don't care that much about the music. All they need is a DJ. And so right. it's like when when I try to explain to people in the Facebook groups, like, hey, this is why I can't increase our pricing. I wouldn't have gigs. It's because of the companies like that. So I don't I don't hate them personally. Well, it, like it one of the things one of the things, Matt, I have big companies here too. I have Sounds Abound, Emit One, Cage and uh, Aquarium, Toast. Stream. That's the other one. That's the other uh, one, Joe. Extreme DJ service. It, it, I, I have a bunch. I have a bunch of of multi ops here as well. Every major market has that, and the way you sell against it, and this is one of the things, and nothing against Joe's company he works for or any multi op, but the way we sell against it is that we're the owners. Yeah. We're there. When yep. you have an owner and you have all these DJs working for them, they're not there at the venue. They have sales staff. They have people out there. A lot of times they have good DJs. Sometimes they get DJs who are okay. And this is one of the things that because the, we as owners, Tracy and I are, are there at an event, we invested interest in that event. And again, they're going to steal, they're going to take jobs away. Sure. I've lost jobs to the big companies. Okay, fine. Great. And again, the people who are looking for a lower price than me, they're not my customer. That's not the customer I'm going for. I had to look at my market and say, Hey, you know what? My customer is a customer who doesn't mind spending X amount of dollars on an event. I put my pricing on the interwebs so that way people can see it and go, oh, he's not a $500 DJ. He's more mm -hmm. of a $3,000 DJ. Why is that? The level of service, what we do and how we do things. And that's the thing is that you get, I have 120 reviews on the knot. And that's why I showcase, hey, I'm a smaller company. Yes, I don't have 40 guys working for me and all this other stuff. I take care of one customer at a time. And that's how you differentiate yourself between yourself and any multi-op. And again, multi-op, they offer a lot of benefits. Nothing against them one bit. There's a lot of multi-ops out there. And I know some guys who run multi-ops. They're nice guys. They they grind the, the, the pavement every day. They go out there, like Joe said, you have know, somebody who does a lot of marketing. That's a very big, huge thing. And, you know, God bless them. They're out there. They're taking every bit job they can. But they have tons of overhead. They have, they're have they a big 500-pound gorilla in the middle of the room. You can't avoid them. You can't work around them. You kind of have to work with them. You have to say, okay, this is the difference me between me and, and them. When Tracy and I sit down, we're the owners. Tracy is a coordinator. There's differences between us and even other DJs, either other single DJs who are just, you know, someone who shows up and says, hey, I could DJ your, your event. We're totally different. And this is how you sell against anyone. And, and it's just knowing your positive negatives when you're talking to a client. What makes you different from everyone else, Matt, your big thing is big sound, EDM style, right. club feel. Yep. You care about the music. You care about the sound. You're passionate about making people dance and have fun and jump around. You can showcase that by showing people to your YouTube channel. You want a party like this? You want the CO2 cannons? That's not the cheap stuff. If someone wants to come in and do a, a lower price wedding, they just want two speakers and someone to play some music then again, they have, there's DJs for that. That may not be your clientele. The clientele says, hey, I care about this. Yeah, you may not do 50 weddings. You may not do 100 weddings or 1,000 weddings, but the weddings you do, you could charge that premium price and offer a premium product. And that's the thing I look at is what the clientele you're going for and how to sell against a bigger item. I run into this all the time. When I worked retail management, same thing. Don't ever be afraid of your competition. Your competition is your competition. You're always going to have competition. You can have someone be your exact clone as you doing the exact same thing, exact same haircut, same attitude, same everything, and he's taking your customers. That's fine and great, but you can only be you. And Matt, I will tell you, a lot of DJs, Joe's a good DJ. There's a lot of good DJs out there, no doubt. But the thing is that you showcase what you can do, what you take pride in, showcase your work, and again, you'll get the business. Will you get every job? No. Will you get as many jobs as you want to? Probably not. I want more jobs, but it's like anything else. I also don't want to kill myself doing weddings every time. You know, yeah. having a couple of weeks off here and there, we had the show last week, which again, you were on vacation, which I I, I appreciate that. And this week, uh, we have two other DJs on vacation. You need to take time for yourself and relax. Just from, just imagine having twice as much business and every weekend you have a job, you're running ragged, you're tired, you're worn out. You have no time for your girlfriend, no time for your family, no time for fun. This way here, you had that work-life balance the way you want it. You're paying your bills. You're able to afford things. You got to look at the positives. You always can't, you know, Kansas say, oh, I want this. 
you may get it, you know, and not be satisfied with it. So that's one of the things. Uh, Jeff. That's good. It's good, buddy. buddy. That's good. Yeah, Jeff. You know, the thing, one last thing I want to say is. Go ahead. Go ahead. I've lost events to Temple DJs, and it's okay because it's all about the business. You know, even though I work for them indirectly, I still have my own company. And whatever keeps us busy, we have the opportunity to say yes or no, you know, bottom line. And that, that's one of the things with like uh, we're subcontracting for a larger company. Sometimes it's a little bit nice because, again, they have the exposure, they have the business because they have so much marketing money to do that. The downside is that you are not making everything you possibly can because they're going to pay you usually lower pay. And that's a, you have the, it's balance. Do you want to do that or not want to do that? And again, that's up to you as your business, how you want to run your business. And then I want to go to Jeff in uh, beautiful North Carolina there. Uh, Jeff, how has your first half of the year been and how is your second half going? Uh, how's everything going up there in, or out there in uh, beautiful North Carolina? Uh, it's going good. Um, slow this summer, which is fine with me. Uh, I like taking a little time off um, since I do have a full-time job. So it's, um, you know, need some vacation. Um, first half of the year was um, was pretty good. I uh, booked um, uh, probably about 10 or 15% more than in previous uh, two years. So it's uh, it picked up. Uh, second half of the year is, uh, it's going slow right now, but a lot of those bookings are, uh, yearly bookings and they usually come in last minute. So, uh, uh, they just need to make sure that they get the dates, uh, secured. Otherwise, you know, somebody else comes along, it's first, uh, first come first serve. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, one of the, uh, you know, I reached out just, uh, last week to, uh, one of the clients, one of the schools, you know, checking on the um, uh, homecoming dance and and they had forgotten all about contacting the DJ. So if I hadn't reached out, they probably would have gotten, you know, right up to, you know, maybe a week or two before the event. So that happens, uh, you know, especially when it's a, you know, an event that is uh, done by, you know, school administrators or teachers or whatever. Uh, it could be a corporate event handled by, you know, someone who may may not even be uh, participating or attending the event. So those things, you know, slip through the cracks, you know, it happens. And, oh, yeah. Um, I, I do the best I can to accommodate them. And uh, so, but yeah, if I hadn't reached out to them, they probably, I probably wouldn't have heard from them until, you know, late September. So <laughs> no big deal. But yeah, it's, it's uh, those, uh, the bookings will come along, uh, especially for October. I'm usually pretty busy and in through uh, to uh, at least uh, November, you know. Now with you, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I know you have a couple of vehicles and you have one of the vehicles you have. It actually is a, a Tesla. It, it's a Model Y or a Model X. Yeah, it's a Y. Y. Have you ever tried to put your gear in there to take to a, an event or? Nope. Nope. I've got a Suburban. Oh, I so, know you get the spur, but you get the you get the bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had a Tahoe, and I needed a little bit more space for um, you know toting you know two or three subs and you know the the video monitor and everything. So uh, I upgraded to the Suburban, and I I really don't need any more space. If I need more space, um, then I'm doing I I don't need to be bringing that much gear. So as simple as that. If I need to, if I need to, uh, to rent a trailer, then I just tell them, yeah, I'm not bringing it. So <laughs> simple as that. Um, but no, the Y is my wife's car. It's uh, for her commute, which is you know 30 minute, 25 minute drive each way every day. So it's perfect for us for that. So we were just talking about that tonight about uh, you know could I fit some you know some of my gear in there? And I, yeah, probably could. Um, not that I ever plan to, but. I mean, I drove it the other day to, to take the kids to soccer to a tournament, and just because you know I wanted to save gas, didn't want to drive the suburban, you know, for you know nearly an hour drive. So, see, so I drove her car. The only reason I ask is because the popularity of like Tesla and certain vehicles, like the Model X. I know it's a bigger of the two SUVs um, versus the Y, but I, I see that, and I, I've not seen many people talk about it in DJ forums with some of the electric vehicles out there about hauling gear and what they're getting for mileage. Cause I know 
electric vehicles, the more weight you put into them and more drag on the motor and they, they won't get as far distance and stuff. But it would be interesting if there was a small enough gig, if you uh, asked the boss, if you could borrow her vehicle for it and took it and just did a, a video on it, that might be uh, something. Again, I'm talking about like, you know, two tops, maybe a sub, you know, a smaller event, something not like a normal event. Uh, that might be a cool thing to put up there because, uh, again, the popularity of the vehicle and, you know, showing real world stuff is always great. But it, it's, you know, I don't, I know the uh, Suburban, uh, that thing right there, you, I know you haul a good amount. And we talked about it before, you're like, if I can haul anything more than that, I'm, I'm not going to get a bigger vehicle. I'm not going to get a trailer. I'm going to say no. <laughs> right, and right. I, I, and yeah, no, I'll, I'll let you know if I, if I ever do take the Y out. Um, you know, t speaking of the cyber truck, cyber truck earlier before the uh, before we went on air, um, you know, we've got one in the neighborhood here. It's um, uh, it is a pickup truck. A lot of people don't don't think don't remember that it is a pickup truck. It has a an eight foot bed in the back. You know, those things are they're massive. I mean, they're covered by that tonneau cover, but it's. It is a pickup truck and it's uh, it's made to haul stuff and it's pretty cool. I've actually considered that as my next vehicle, uh, you know, potentially because I could with that cover, you could put all your gear. I would not put my gear in the back of a pickup truck uncovered, obviously. And um, so but but with this cover, it's sealed in there and it's tight and it's lockable. It's kind of nice. Uh, and there's a lot of space between that and the back seat. I could get easily all my gear in there. So uh, that's just got to convince the wife to buy something like that to put in the garage that's that ugly. So <laughs> it, I I would say between, if I was going to look at, and we actually, when we were coming down, there was a Rivian next to it and the Rivian was taller. The Rivian was a tad shorter than the Cybertruck, but the Rivian looked like more like a regular truck. The Cybertruck it does look like from the the game the game uh, Cyberpunk. It looks like a very futuristic. I know that Elon wanted to do that. That was his thing. They're cool looking. Um, but the thing is that I would like if if I was going to pick a, a EV vehicle, um, I would probably go to the Rivian uh, pickup truck or go to the Rivian SUV just because of the fact that. It's more. It looks more like a normal truck. And the one thing on the vehicles, you have a frunk too. So you have that front. You know, and your Y, you have that front trunk that you could store stuff in there, which you don't have on a normal gas. Yeah, it, it depends on which which vehicle you're looking at. The Y, the the frunk is not that big. I mean, you might be able to get one suitcase in there. You know, that's about it. Um, but you know, I'm not going to get. Um, I'm probably not going to get much. I, I probably won't get a controller in there. It's not big enough for my controller. Um, but you know, I could put a bag in there, you know, or something, you know, tool bag or, uh, or a cable bag or something, but yeah, the, the frunk in the, uh, the cyber truck is, is much bigger. It's a, it's a pretty good size. You could put a person in there almost. I, I also noticed, uh, I was at the Ford dealership. Cause again, I, I was talking a little before this, my F-350 isn't for us uh, for service and I had to drop it off. I went with warranty or fixing it, you know, the, the problem, uh, and they have they had a um uh F150 lightning in the the car wash right there which is right by the entrance to the um uh for dropping a vehicle off for repair so it's right into the entrance of the repair bay and in the wash uh they they were pulling it out and uh they popped the front trunk on it that front trunk area is big like for you can hold someone could lay down in there no problem and chillax you know <laughs> so yeah I, you look at that you can put some stuff in there you have the back seat and if you got like a, a tonneau cover on the back of that you can haul some stuff and you know uh you don't you don't have to worry about it as long as you get stuff that's designed to be sealed and that's that's always a cool thing but yeah and, and that's because uh, you know ford decided to make the their electric vehicle the exact same shape and size as their regular F-150. So that that had, you know, there's no engine there. So there's all that space, there's all that room. So, uh, and, and it looks like, you know, if you, if, if you don't know the the subtle differences, you know, they look exactly the same. You know, so. Well, yeah. And th the thing is they're sharing a lot of body work and a lot of things. Cause again, why yeah. reinvent the wheel, you know, with it. And again, the F-150 is a very popular truck. Uh, I again having an F three fifty, they F three fifty, two fifty, one fifty, the four fifty, five fifty. They all share the same cab. They share a lot of uh, 
parts between the vehicles. So again, why reinvent the wheel when you can put the same stereo in all of them? You know, it, it's stuff, little stuff like that. But it is, it is uh, one of the things that, you know, um, I was thinking about that. I'm like, you know, when I was talking to Tracy, I'm like, that's right. Uh, we're driving. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. Jeff's got a uh, Model Y. I'm going to take that out for a gig. And what does he see in reduction in, in distance and stuff? Because, again, it's, it's it's a cool thing. But the vehicles are, are, you know, newer and a lot of questions from people. And, again, that would be a great thing. Uh, I may get some extra clicks on there, you know, some extra uh, people watching it and uh, <laughs> yeah. some extra. Uh, no, no, I will say. The only thing I don't like, uh, that, that I, I love everything about my Suburban. The only thing I do not like about it is the height uh, of the, uh, you know, getting the gear out. You know, you were speaking earlier of, you know, the ramps and those things. Uh, there's really nowhere to put a ramp in mind uh, when it's full of gear. Um, and you do have to be careful taking stuff out because it, it is, it's at a decent height, unlike a, uh, a minivan or, or a vehicle with a lower you know, uh, center of gravity, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's the only thing, you know, when you're lifting a, you know, 15 inch, 18 inch sub into the back of that thing, it's, it's a good, it's a good uh, little amount to lift it up into the air. Yeah. I, I run to that all the time, lifting my coffin case in with my XZ and putting the speakers in the back of the sprinter because it's, you know, it's, it's, I, I want to say at least two feet, if not more off the ground, that back lip to get into the back of the, of the van. So Every time we getting stuff out, that's not a problem because you're just slowing gravity down a little bit. But lifting stuff up, you're fighting against gravity, and you know, a 40, 50 pound, 60 pound, 80 pound item is always heavier. So, <laughs> yep. Um, well, I got, well, back. Yeah. Well, I got two cars to choose from for my DJ gigs. I got my dad's 2015 Nissan Pathfinder and my mom's 2014 Ford Fusion. There you go. And again, having a, having a two vehicles is always a great option. Uh, got a follow-up question from Kevin before I get to Brentley. Um, follow-up question. Do you have regular gigs and reach out to them if they haven't reached out to you? And uh, if so, when should you have con – when should they have – wait, when should you contact them? I take it because the way he's worded it. So if he had – you have regular gigs. You have a holiday party every single November – they have you for the holiday party or they have a birthday party or a company has, you know, um, an event at a car dealership or whatever. Every year they have this barbecue and they have you DJ it and they haven't gotten a hold of you yet. When should you reach out to them? Um, I would definitely would say, you know, for me, uh, earlier the better. And that's one of the things I would always tell someone is that especially I, I have one of my friends, I do his, uh, company party it's the only non-wedding thing i really do consistently every year and that's because he's a friend i know i know the owner uh but he knows every year hey this is the date for next year i need to book you now and i write in the calendar and i have that and the reason why because i tell him i go we get crazy busy i don't want to book something on your date because i don't know what day it's floating on but they figured it out way way in advance so when i see him this november for his party, he already has a date for next year already set in his calendar. So that is, you know, that's one of the things to avoid that. But I would definitely say that months in advance, a couple months in advance, three months, four months, like right now, I would be contacting people for holiday parties for this year. That's why I would do. Um, is, this a re is this a recurring client? Yeah, this is a recurring client. This is a regular oh, client he gets every year. As soon as they book the venue, I would send them a contract. Why even wait? There you go. What about I you, mean, Matt? I, would, I wouldn't even wait. I would just, if this is a recurring client, I wouldn't want to lose them. No. So it would just be like, do you have a venue? Great. Here's a contract. There you We're go. go. I mean, I wouldn't wait. Why would you wait? What about you, Matt? <laughs> what, what do you think? So, corporate events. The community changes, somebody gets fired or laid off or they leave. Now that person's not in charge anymore. Guess what? You're out. Yeah. It's as simple as that. <laughs> there you go. Matt, what about, what about you when you deal with corporate clients? You're muted still. Maybe he's got us muted. <laughs> All right, Dwayne, what about you? 
uh, if you have a uh, occurring um, event, when do you usually reach out? They haven't reached out to you by. Um, I'm usually in contact with them at least throughout that. So from the time I do the gig until the next time, but then if I, if it seemed like they got in silence or they forgot about me, I try to do it within two or uh, two months or a month in advance. Now, unless something comes up, if something comes up that I think it might conflict with that date, then I'll get in contact and make sure we're still on. Okay. Jeff, what about you? Yeah, about 90 days is uh, is when I will, would reach out to them. Or if I have another client that's looking at their uh, similar date, uh, I would reach out to the original client, uh, to the first client, and give them, you know, the first refusal um, and then book accordingly. All right. And Matt, I can't hear. Hunter, what about you? Well, I usually don't get any recurring clients. I just go wherever I'm needed. But if they do need me again the following year, like, you know, with um, Night to Shine, I'll probably remind them probably, since it's usually in February, I'll probably remind them in December or January, like maybe after Christmas. Okay, so a few months I had. Yeah, if they still need me to DJ the Night to Shine. So or, I, you know, I, or, or, or you'd be like, Joe, just right off the bat, saying, hey, you know, next year, Kind of like I do, saying, "Hey, you're, you you get your date yet? I, let's get a sign because I get booked up fast and I don't want to lose this." And I, I totally agree with Joe on that because it's it's one of the yeah. things, oh, but right. it's something that you don't want to push too hard because you don't want uh -huh. them get mad at you either. So it's it's kind of a catch twenty two somewhat. Okay, yeah. so recurring DJ, clients. yeah, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, Joe. No, I'm just saying if they're a recurring recurring client year up year, it's a no brainer. You know, why Why take that risk? Yes. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Uh, DJ Bradley, I know you've been quiet this time. But it's, uh, I had to take some time to get to you, but uh, what about with you, with uh, your first half of the year and then your second half? Has it been busy, been good? Your second half looking I, really good? I've been absolutely nonstop busy and Part and parcel, it's my own doing for not turning any of the or taking as many club dates as I can get outside of weddings. And actually, that was part and parcel why I left the multi op last week and management and all that and went back on my own. And in the last week, I have found at least like 25 hours in my week where I'm able to do what I want to do, like musically, like and all of that. So I went from being stressed out busy to now I'm at the right pace again. And if, you know, so a lot of folks who go to seminars or like conferences, Matt Radicelli put it best at uh, Midwest DJs Live in 2020. I heard his words, knew what they meant, but really didn't take it to heart until he told this last year and last week when I really thought about it. And he said, sometimes you just have to say no. And me walking away from a pretty penny with the multi-op as management, I have found, you know, even this one week, my time is more, and Mitch Taylor and I talked about this as well last night, my time is more important than just working. And I needed to come up with the DJ life versus personal life versus parent life balance. And I think I found it now. Brandon Mira spent the last couple nights at her best friend's house. So I kind of overdid it and I didn't, I stayed up from Sunday night all the way until 6 a.m. yesterday working nonstop, drinking coffee in front of my computer, highly productive with it and took a seven hour nap or a six hour nap. And I've been back up doing stuff with the kid and everything else today. So the work life balance all of a sudden without, you know, being in the multi op is perfect. And that's, that's one of the things is that, uh, having that time that you can enjoy it with your daughter. Yeah. And I, I saw your post on Facebook that she came from her friend's house and she's napping and you're trying to get stuff done. And what do you do? Go back and work on the computer, which is true. You know, as, as DJs, yeah. you know, we're trying to get muted together or trying to get things together. Uh, we're trying to, you know, reach out to clients, reach out to whomever. And, you know, having those emails, having that, you know, post stuff on social media, having the activeness on things is very important and that's that that that's a huge 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 thing 
your second half of the year, you're, you're just as busy. And again, now that you have, um, now you have your work life balance a little more imbalanced. Uh, are you still doing as many club gigs or are you taking it back a little bit or doing more weddings or what are you doing? I, uh, I did something. I actually didn't book myself for Friday night, which is the first time I have mentally or coherently said, no, I'm taking a night off in probably five or six years on a weekend night. And it's rare I want to, but I'm knowing that August, September, October, November, I think I have six weddings in December. I'm going to be slammed the rest of the year out between weddings and my club dates that I better get the off time now. <coughs> Excuse me. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, that having that balance is something I need again. And I won't lie, you know, last week having 20 plus hours free, I spent, you know, when Mira went to bed, normally I'm up doing, I was up doing multi-op work. Last week, I stayed up Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights and whipped out one hella badass set Friday night at Legends, which I am utterly proud of, which over the last few years, I haven't had the real strong time to be able to sit down and be like, yeah, I need to be playing that tonight, that, that, and that pull that out of your rotation for the night and really delve into what I wanted to do because legends being, you know, similar to like icon and Stevens point and liquid in Madison and a lot of these EDM clubs, I wanted to be spot on and do something different and then keep doing something different. As I go back there, this is the only way I saw it possible by 86 ing some of the stuff that was bogging me down. And that's the important thing. And then um, Kevin to followed up with, um, he said, uh, is that too, fo uh, forward or aggressive to, uh, ask for, uh, dates? I'm like, no, not I'm going to say all. no. Joe's probably in the same boat. I'm in. No, it's Here, not being aggressive. You're stream proactive and it's never an aggressive thing to say, um, you know, Hey, you know what? You have this event every year, barbecue, birthday party, whatever it is. And that you have me DJ it. Having a signed contract now, I know I'm locked in. I'm not asking for money. I'm just asking to for you to say, hey, yeah, I'm having this. I want you back. And again, they haven't got a hold of you by now. And if it's for November or December or even a Good Halloween job. party. I would definitely be, you know, picking up the phone, text messaging, stopping by, whatever way you communicate with them and talking to the people that are there. And again, Joe said it before, corporations, companies, People leave and new people come in. They don't know about you. They don't know who you are. And you call them up and say, hey, I'm the DJ. He does your party. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I was going to start looking. Ah, we'll see that you cut off in the past. And, you know, they're like, oh, well, this is the guy always knows. He knows what he's doing. All right, let's get him the business. So that's one of the things also being proactive like that is a great thing. And yeah, Matt's here. Well, yeah, I'm back about stuff like that. You, Matt, you get, if you don't ask, you don't get fed. That's right. Period. And there's and it, no such thing as being too forward or aggressive, especially if you already have the rapport with them. You need to keep that rapport going and that relationship. And that's the big thing. And Matt, what really quickly, I know you're talking to your girlfriend. He had a couple other things going on. Yeah. Um, uh, Kevin asked, uh, you know, he has a regular occurring gig and he wanted to know when to reach out to them. Is it, uh, you know, a yearly occurrence, you know, like a Halloween party or a corporate party for Christmas oh. or whatever? Um, um, and they haven't got a hold of you yet. When do you reach out to them? And then uh, Joe and I were saying as soon as possible, the sooner the better. What do you feel? Yeah, uh, it depends because we do some schools and just like uh, Jeff said, they forget about you or new ASB class comes in and one of them knows a DJ or... Somehow your name never gets shared to the next generation. Uh, I mean, we had schools, we did all three dances a couple years in a row, and then all of a sudden, nothing. Uh, they just never reached out. I don't know who the new advisor is. I don't know this or that. Like, it's so that that's why, like, you know, more power to these guys that that do the school dances and manage to do the same clients year over year and keep the in, like the crazy pricing they have. Because I've never been lucky like that. We have a couple schools that we thought we had perfect relationships with and all of a sudden you know one year the students don't raise enough money so they don't have dances with good djs anymore i 
I don't know, stupid. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know how people do that business, but, um, I always reach out like uh, a couple months ahead of time. You got to think what kind of event it is and when they're going to plan it. Like Halloween event probably wouldn't start being planned till mid to late September. Uh, if, if that might even be too early. Um, and then, uh, you know, when it comes to Christmas parties, like I try to reach out to the companies October for Christmas parties. Um, a lot of times though, again, it gets traded off to somebody new, uh, somebody new is planning it instead of HR this year or, uh, whoever. And you would think like, Oh, I was, if they weren't at the party the previous year, they're not going to know who to use. Like maybe they ask, but maybe they take it upon themselves to plan out the party on a smaller budget with somebody else and they find their own DJ. So you never know. Um, that's what, uh, but, but there's, as Joe was saying, there's plenty of work to go around. <laughs> you just got to find it sometimes. Um, yep. they got to find you. So I, uh, I always target my Google ads more towards corporate when it comes to holiday season. Um, and, uh, you know, I, target the word holiday party DJ or corporate DJ more than I target wedding DJ and things like that. So I don't know. Depends. Um, it also helps to just like one of the schools we did, I had a texting and Instagram relationship with the principal. He would like all my posts. And so like, that was an easy, like, Hey, you know, all right, what are we doing for the dances here? And then he told me like, Oh, I, I work for the district now. Oh. And it's like, well, that just, lost any relationship with that school hey. i haven't heard from him since so it's uh it's unfortunate because the the gig log i had just posted that was that school uh they have like a rule where i can't post anything on like the public domain like youtube if the kids are still at the school so I had to post it two years after the fact after all the juniors had graduated uh la la school district you know has joe has some interesting rules when it comes to what they uh when they're vet with their vendors but. And that, that's, you know, again, if you're doing schools, there are a lot of school districts have different unique things. Some require background checks, some require depending on state and local laws. So it's one of the things that you always have to look at. Oh, man, this hour went by really fast. And, you know, it's always amazing, you know, all the DJs here and all the knowledge and information. Uh, want to thank Joe for coming in tonight. We're going to have thank him back on me. again. Uh, thank you. Just great having everyone else here, too, as always. You know, it's it's great having uh, some great DJs, great minds, and different ideas, different thoughts. And you know, uh, again, we're all working DJs here. We all have our businesses. We all have different markets. Some share markets. Some are close by. Some are on the other side of the, of the uh, country. But we all share one passion, and it is to make sure our customers are taken care of. And we're all passionate about being a small business person and being a DJ. Having fun with music, having fun with gear. And if you like gear, you like all the information, make sure you hang out here. With that said, I'm gonna have uh de -de 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 -de. I'm gonna have Jeff take us out this week. Jeff, take us out tonight, sir. Thanks everybody for watching the DJ Roundtable show and uh hope to see you back here next week. Uh until then, have a great week. Thanks for coming. Good night, everyone. <laughs>